Hi everyone, sorry for that little delay. Um, I had to see how to put it in slideshow mode, it wasn't doing it. Alright, so we're going to go over chapter 5, which is sex in your body. Um, first, let's start by defining sexuality. Uh, the book definition of sexuality is a dimension of personality shaped by biological, psychosocial, and cultural forces. Um, basically, sexuality concerns all aspects of sexual behavior. Um, it really influences our individual sense of identity because sexuality and sex is a really big part of human identity. Um, uh, sexuality is viewed more on a spectrum. Uh, the first person to kind of uh, propose this idea of sexuality being on a spectrum was Alfred Kinsey, who was a sex researcher, and he said that um, there really isn't any um, clear labeling of sexuality, whether it's heterosexual or homosexual, rather um, most sexual behavior is viewed on a spectrum between the two of these different um, categories. So what we're going to talk about, um, it's a very general view of sexuality. Um, but we're going to go into male and female reproductive parts, um, female male maturation, so very general. Um, if you are interested later on, you can always take a human sexuality course, which I would definitely recommend. Um, so we're going to talk about basic information about the body, sexual functioning, and sexual behavior that's vital to sexual wellness. Okay. Just to get our feet wet, um, we uh, I'm going to ask you some true or false questions, and you're going to kind of think about it and um, tell me what you think. True or false? The average American first has sexual intercourse at about 16 or 17 years of age. This is true. About six to eight out of every 10 American women have masturbated. This is true. I always say six to eight and the other two or four are lying. Just kidding. But uh, six to eight. Most women have orgasms from penile thrusting alone. False. Uh, most women have orgasms through clitoral stimulation. All men like large female breasts. False. Um, there's a variety of uh, likes and dislikes um, when it comes to male and female bodies, so it does vary. People usually lose interest in sexual activities after age 60. That's false. Um, we are. What's interesting is we're seeing a increase in uh, STDs actually in the elderly population. A lot of nursing homes um, and a lot of uh, senior communities. So um, definitely is a false statement. Masturbation is physically harmful. This is false. Um, the average length of a man's erect penis is five to seven inches. This is all true. Uh, impotence usually cannot be treated successfully. Impotence, um, we don't really say impotence anymore. We um, say erectile dysfunction, but it basically is the um, inability to achieve an erection um, after sexual stimulation. Um, and this is false. It can be treated. Petroleum, jelly, Vaseline, intensive care, and baby oil are not good lubricants to use with a diaphragm or condom. This is true, you do want to focus on water-based lubricants and not oil-based. Um, this They can um, be ineffective and they can cause a condom to break. Most women prefer a sexual partner who has a large penis. This is false. Um, I think uh, from what I've been reading, most men are the ones that are um, uh, worried about their penis size versus uh, women. Um, a lot of times women prefer a man um, who is of average size or not too big because they are afraid of um, possible um, uh, injury. 
A woman cannot get pregnant if she has sex during her menstrual period. This is false. Um, chances are low, but there is still a chance that um, you can get pregnant when you're on your period. Sperm can live in the body for up to seven days, so it is very much possible. A woman cannot get pregnant if a man withdraws his penis before ejaculating. This is also false. Um, withdrawal is a very uh, ineffective way of preventing pregnancy. First of all, a lot of men may not be able to withdraw in time um, before they ejaculate. And secondly, uh, you know, pre-cum oftentimes has sperm in it. Okay. Let's get into the actual lecture. So you kind of got an idea of some of the things that people um, think about when it comes to sexuality and when you think about um, some of the myths and the truth, think about some things that maybe we didn't, I didn't mention here that you know of. Okay, let's talk a little bit about sexual anatomy. Both men and women have gonads, which are sex cells. Um, these gonads are in the form of ovaries in females and testes in males. Gonads produce germ cells and sex hormones. And this is in the form of ova or eggs in females and sperm in males. Um, ova and sperm are the basic units of reproduction. Um, basically, they result in a union of two which results in the creation of new life. Now, when a um, woman is born, she is um, born with a certain set number of uh, gonads or, or eggs. Um, males usually have uh, much more and can produce sperm um, up to um, old age, whereas females can't always do this or can't do that. All right, uh, a little bit about the female sexual organs. Um, we're going to talk about the external organs. Um, we're going to talk about the, and I'll show you a diagram, um, the fatty area above the um, external uh, vulva, uh, which is called the bones pubis, uh, labia majora, labia minora. I will show all of these on the, the, um, the diagram for you. It'll make more sense when you see it on the diagram. The clitoris, the prepus, the urethral vaginal openings, um, the vagina. Um, we when we're talking about the vagina, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that most people refer to the um, uh, external part of the uh, female as the vagina, whereas it, the vagina is an internal organ, and I'll show you that in a second. So. Um, a vagina is the passage that leads to internal reproductive organs. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the G-spot, uterus, cervix, ovaries, and fallopian tubes. Okay, so as you can see here, um, the mons pubis is this fatty area over the, um, the external female reproductive organs. Um, the, you've got two uh, lips here that are the labia majora. And then you've got the labia minora, okay? Um, there are two tiny glands on either side. Um, these are called Bartholin's glands, and basically they provide lubrication during excitation and sexual activity. Um, this is the clitoris, okay? And the clitoris is, is analogous to or similar to the penis in a male. Um, it contains a lot of nerve endings, um, mostly concentrated in one area, in a smaller area than the penis. This is the urethral opening, and this is the vaginal opening, which um, oftentimes uh, is covered by uh, a hymen, which is a small, thin membrane that breaks, um, either during first sexual activity or um, some type of, type of trauma um, or it just on its own. So it doesn't necessarily have to be during sexual activity. All right. So this structure here, um, uh, basically on the exam, I'm going to give you this structure right here and I'm going to ask you to label the different parts. Um, so make sure that you do 
study this structure here. Um, you've got the fallopian tubes here, and you've got the ovaries here. The ovaries are where the egg is, one egg is released each month. Uh, mostly one egg, but we'll get into twins and triplets later if we have time. Um, so we've got the ovaries, we've got the fallopian tubes. So the egg is released um, each month and it travels down the fallopian tube. Uh, you know, and this is the uterus. If there uh, is sperm implantation, the sperm will meet up with the egg and the fertilized egg will travel down and attach to the uterine wall. Um, and that's how we get pregnancy. Okay, and the fetus. We've got the cervix here. Okay, this is the opening to the uterus. The uterus is a U-shaped structure. Um, the positioning of the uterus is, is, is a bit different for each female. Um, rectum, vagina. Now keep in mind, as I, as I stated in the previous slide, the vagina is an internal organ. It is not an external organ. So in society, most people state the vagina being uh, an external organ, whereas it is this hollow, flexible internal organ. Um, anus, perineum, vaginal opening, labia minora, labia majora. This is the clitoris, and note how the clitoris kind of extends more inside the body. So it's not just as 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 uh, short in length as we think it is. It does extend into the body a bit, um, and urethral opening right here. Okay, so keep all of this in mind um, when the when a female has her monthly menstrual cycle. Uh, what happens is that the lining of the uterus, called the endometrium, and uh, gets thick and blood filled and gets ready to nourish a fertilized egg. Now, if there is no pregnancy, that endometrium is shed every month. Um, so this is where uh, the menstruation comes from. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we get along. All right, let's talk a little bit about the male sex organs. We've got the penis, and again, I'll show you a diagram. The glands, um, which are covered by foreskin, um, sometimes depending on culture, religion, um, I don't know, preference, um, a male is circumcised, which means that that foreskin is removed. Uh, there are a variety of, of opinions about circumcision, which we're not going to go into in this lecture. There's a shaft of the penis, um, the scrotum. Uh, the scrotum is a pouch that contains and maintains the temperature of the testes, and we will talk about some of the, the functions of the scrotum. The urethra, which carries urine and semen. And the Cowper's gland, um, we'll talk about what the Cowper's gland does um, also as well, okay? So here we got, go, we've got the external structure, we've got the penis. Um, this is an uncircumcised penis, which has the foreskin still. This is a circumcised penis, which has the foreskin removed. You've got the testes, okay? Um, and you've got the uh, glands of the penis, and you've got the um, opening of the urethra, right? Uh, here with the internal structures, you've got the bladder, you've got the pubic bone, uh, the vas deferens, okay? Uh, corpus spongiosum. Now, if you look here, the corpus spongiosum is um, spongy tissue inside the penis that fills with blood during um, excitation, and that's what causes an erection. We've got the penis, you've got the urethra, the glands, and the opening of the uh, urethra. Um, you've got the testes, okay? Now the testes is where immature sperm are, um, are produced. Now once a sperm mature, they travel into the epididymis. Now, the epididymis is a coiled structure, and after the epididymis, they go into, or they mature in the epididymis, and they go into the vas deferens, and from the vas deferens, they travel down. As they're traveling down, this area of the bladder closes off um, to prevent any urine from mixing with the semen, 
Now, as a man grows older, this becomes um, an issue sometimes, and it does not close off. But that's you know another uh, issue for uh, when a man become, gets older. So you've got the prostate right here. Um, and so during what happens during ejaculation is as the sperm is traveling um, through the vas deferens, it basically gets um, some uh, 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 semen and precum and pre ejaculate from three structures. Now remember this the first one is the seminal vesicle, the second one is the prostate, and the third one is the Cowper's gland. Okay, so these three structures or glands basically produce sperm with semen and pre ejaculate and pre cum um, and help uh, in sperm nourishment and mobility. So again, the seminal vesicle, the uh, Cowper's gland, and the prostate. Okay, and then sperm mixed with this uh, travel through the penis and um, uh, ejaculation occurs. So internal structure, and I'll give you this on the exam as well. All right, uh, kind of talked about the journey of the sperm in the previous slide, but again, the um, the uh, sperm are produced in the testes. They're mature there. Once they are matured, they are stored in the epididymis. Um, during sexual excitation, before ejaculation, they move through the vas deferens. Um, the vas deferentia merge into the seminal vesicles. Um, the seminal vesicles, again, as I mentioned, have secretions that provide nutrients for the sperm. Um, the sperm pass through the prostate gland. Uh, they then pick up milky fluid and become semen. After that, they flow into oops, excuse me. After that, they flow into the ejaculatory ducts um, for ejaculation. Okay, so um, that is the pathway of the sperm. Um, again, male sex hormones are made by the testes, and we're going to talk a little bit about what kinds of hormones um, males produce. Both males and females are, produce androgens, um, which include testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. All right. Um, female sex hormones that are produced by the ovaries include estrogen, progestins, and testosterone. Now you may say, well, you know, I didn't know that males also produce estrogen, progesterone. Yes, they do, but in very much smaller amounts compared to females. And same with females, they do produce uh, testosterone, but in smaller, much smaller amounts than males. Okay, so both males and females have all the hormones. It's just uh, differing amounts. The adrenal glands are also other glands that also produce sex hormones. Um, they are regulated by the pituitary gland hormones, which is the master gland. It regulates all the other glands in the body. Um, and the master gland is controlled by the hypothalamus hormones, which are um, is in the brain. Okay, so it's all kind of works together perfectly. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about some hormonal um, issues that arise. Um, now, one of the um, conditions that arises with uh, different um, genetics is called uh, Klinefelter syndrome. When you have uh, a male, you have an X and a Y. You have a female, you have an X and an X. And I think most of you probably studied this in high school genetics. Um, now, in some cases, you've got Klinefelter syndrome, which is an XXY. Now, um, this is these are uh, uh, males whose masculinization is incomplete and may show some female physical characteristics, um, such as bigger breasts. Uh, these individuals are infertile. Testosterone administered at puberty will masculinize the body, but it does not correct the infertility. Um, Turner syndrome is an XO. So these are uh, uh, individuals that are missing ovaries or have deficient ovaries. They don't develop at puberty unless given synthetic hormones. A little bird outside. I was like, what is that? Um, 
a seagull. <laughs> okay, differentiation of the embryo. So let's talk a little bit about conception. Um, when conception occurs, there's a com combining of 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, 22 are pretty much the same, and the 23rd is the uh, sex chromosome. The egg carries an X sex chromosome, and the sperm carries either an X or a Y chromosome. Okay, so who's responsible for the sex of the baby? The male is. XX provides the blueprint to produce a female, and XY pro pro provides, excuse me, the blueprint to produce a male. Um, testosterone is, is the key to sexual differentiation. Now, what this means is that uh, when we all start out, we all start out as female. Now, a surge in testosterone is key for the development of male um, sexual um, uh, uh, reproductive parts. So, you know, that's one thing to remember. It's that we all start out as females, and surge in testosterone uh, determines whether a male is born or not. Um, I apologize, I should have put this uh, slide before the previous two slides, but uh, some abnormal um, abnormalities occur sometimes. Um, Kleinfelter's and Turner syndrome, which we covered in the previous slide, so I apologize. Should have been this should have been before those two. Um, here is a normal set of chromosomes. So as you can see, these are all the same. These, uh, the 23rd one is um, what is differentiated as male or female. Okay, um, again, you know, this may seem like a lot because it seems very general. We're kind of going from topic to topic. Um, reproductive anatomy and then uh, sperm production and um, uh, conception and puberty, but you know, again, uh, this is a 101 class, so it's very, very general. Uh, female sexual maturation, uh, sexual differentiation is accentuated at puberty. Um, puberty usually occurs around ages 8 to 13, um, varies with each uh, woman or girl. Uh, breast development occurs, the rounding of hips and buttocks occur, um, menarch or uh, menstruation occurs. Uh, the menstrual cycle basically has four phases. Um, you've got menses, which is a period where the endometrial lining is shed, which is days one through five. You've got the estrogenic phase, days six through thirteen. This is where the egg matures. The endometrium thickens to prepare itself for a fertilized egg. Ovulation is day 14. This is where an egg is released, ovum is released. Corpus luteum is basically the um, outer shell that protects the egg. Um, it is um, shed after uh, the egg is released. It's actually uh, shed along with the um, endometrium. Ovulation is the most fertile time. Uh, for a woman. After that is the progestational phase, which is days 15 through 27. Now, this is what it all looks like. There's a bunch of different things happening here. Um, you've got the pituitary hormone levels in the bloodstream, which are uh, what you have here in the green is your luteinizing hormone, L-E-U-T-N-I-Z-I-N-G. And then you've got your follicle stimulating hormone right here. And it does what it says. It stimulates the follicle to be released from the corpus luteum. You've got your ovarian hormone levels in your bloodstream as well. You've got estrogen, progesterone that are kind of peaking at different times throughout the cycle. You've got your ovarian cycle, which starts out with an immature follicle, and that matures. Eventually, the egg is released, and the corpus luteum is um, sloughed off in the body. Now, um, what happens here, as you can see with the surge in some of these hormones, is that the endometrial lining starts to thicken here. All right. Now, if uh, the egg is released and there is a pregnancy, it's joined with the sperm, the endometrial lining stays thickened and does, is not sloughed off. You do not get your period. Um, the purpose of the thickening of the endometrial lining is to provide a place for the egg to grow and receive its nutrients, okay, the fertilized egg. Now, if there is no pregnancy, as you know, every month um, a woman will get her period and the uh, corpus luteum and the endometrial lining is shed, okay? 
Male sexual maturation uh, begins about 10 or 11 years old or later, um, depends. About two years later than in girls, so they mature a little bit later. Uh, some of the physical changes that we do see are testicular growth, uh, penis growth, uh, pubic hair growth, uh, facial and body hair growth. Uh, the voice changes, you know, as, uh, during sort of the this time, anywhere between 10 to 13, the voice starts to crack because it's starting to, to deepen. Height and weight increase. And if you look at this chart, you'll see that there are different um, uh, kind of shows age and years for both uh, girls and boys as to when they are uh, maturing. Okay. Just a little tidbit about human aging and human sexuality. Um, when we age, our body definitely goes through a lot of changes. Uh, menstruation stops during a phase that we call menopause. Um, the ovaries gradually cease functioning, um, decreasing estrogen. Uh, this might require, or depends on the woman, uh, might require hormone replacement therapy. Um, you know, there are some symptoms which are not very pleasant, which are like hot flashes and other symptoms uh, during menopause. Uh, definitely important for females especially to take calcium to prevent um, osteoporosis. In males, uh, there is a gradual decrease of testosterone. However, they can still produce sperm and um, reproduce. Uh, there are just some changes in arousal, but again, this does not mean that they are, you know, the elderly do not enjoy sex or do not, are not um, aroused. Um, some things that might occur are erectile dysfunction, or as we termed it earlier, which is impotence, but now we call it erectile dysfunction. Um, we do talk a lot about, um, you know, these different um uh, issues sexually as uh, individuals grow older, but again, these are all, can all be addressed by uh, medical intervention, they can be addressed through therapy, there are a lot of different options. Um, this was a very, very, very general uh, lecture, but as you know, for this, this class, every week is a different topic, and um, you know, we can only go into it a little bit, but sort of to get your feet wet. Okay. And I will stop the show now.